You are listening to Productivity Straight Talk with your host, Amber De La Garza. Amber is a sought-after productivity coach, trainer, speaker, and writer who gives entrepreneurs the straight talk on personal productivity. No BS fluff or overused jargon, just actionable strategies to get results and succeed in business. And here is your host, Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. Welcome, and thank you for listening to Productivity Straight Talk. Today is episode 95, taking on your task mismanagement, a strategy session with Casey Hodos. If you are an entrepreneur who wants actionable solutions to maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most, then you're in the right place, and I'm so glad you've joined me. I'm looking forward to bringing another special episode, a strategy session with a client on air. This is a great opportunity for you not just to learn vicariously through my strategy session with Casey, but also to discover what is a strategy session? What would it be like to do a strategy session with me? To find out more about a strategy session with me, you can go to theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash strategy session. Today's session is with Casey Hodes. Casey is a professional therapist in private practice in Wake Forest, North Carolina, specializing in supporting women through their pregnancies and into the mad world of motherhood. After climbing out of her own experiences with postpartum anxiety, she discovered a passion for providing hope for new moms as they make the biggest adjustment of their lives. Casey lives in Wake Forest with her husband, son, and dog. She enjoys seeing the world and learning all the things from all the podcasts and teaching people how to properly distinguish good iced tea from bad iced tea. When listening in on my conversation with Casey, you will discover insights into creating a solid task management system, how to carve out purposeful time in your schedule and stick to it, why you must treat your task list like your boss, best practices for using notifications, tips to maximize white space, and so much more. So let's dive right in and meet Casey. This episode of Productivity Straight Talk is brought to you by my very own signature coaching and training program, Stop the Entrepreneur's Success Solution. If you are ready to stop struggling in your business and start succeeding, head on over to theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash stop to find out more. Again, that's theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash stop, S-T-O-P. Welcome to Productivity Straight Talk, Casey. How are you doing today? Great, Amber. Nice to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to have you. This is my pleasure. I'm really looking forward to this coaching session. I would love for you to start out and share with our listeners in your own words a bit about yourself and your business and and then we'll go from there. And then I'll ask you what your challenge is that we want to address in today's session. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I'm Casey Hodes. I'm a therapist in Wake Forest, North Carolina in private practice. And I specialize in supporting new moms with the adjustment to their crazy new life with baby. Yes. I actually totally understand that. The crazy new mom thing is no joke. Right. Nobody thinks it's going to be easy, but you just don't know how hard it's going to be until you actually do it. And I struggled after I had my son seven years ago, and I still find it extremely challenging being a mom. So I love to just help share accurate information with new moms going through it and letting them know that they're not alone and it's hard for all of us. Yes. I'm not sure that I had anybody telling me that. I just knew very clearly as soon as I had my son. Whoa, I'm not sure I knew what I was getting myself into. (laughs) Exactly. It just tests you emotionally and physically and just all the things, even when they're just newborns and you think they sleep all day and no, you're exhausted. I know. Nobody tells you the truth about it. (laughs) No, no. I did have one really, really good friend that told me the truth about delivery. You know, that friend that pulls Uh, you to the side and tells uh you like the real truth. And since then, I've been that friend to other people because I was like, hold on, why did I only have one friend tell me this truth? More more people should have told me what was going to happen. 
I love it. Yes, I hear that from everybody. So yeah, I'm on a mission to share the brutal honesty about motherhood. Okay. And that's awesome. help you through it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. All right, awesome. Great. So you reached out to me and applied for an on-air coaching session. And we did chat previous because I didn't know you. You've been a listener of Productivity Straight Talk. And I just wanted to get an essence of what we may be talking about in our session. So fast forward, we're here today. Let us in on, in your own words, what challenge would you like to find a solution to in today's session? Well, I'm a fan of my technology and I love my calendar and I love setting reminders and things like that. I also love Trello and I love OmniFocus and I love Evernote and I have reminders going off constantly from all these places and I have notes written down like ideas for blog articles and reminders of what to pick up from the grocery store. And I just have so many apps. It's like it's overwhelming to know what is really helping me because I find that I lose productivity time just looking for where did I write that down? I know I had that note somewhere. I know I had that person's contact somewhere. And my inbox email becomes like a to-do list. And uh, and I was like, yeah, I just knew that you'd be the one to help me with this. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you spoke about several apps that you use or partially use. Your yes. email. How about paper? Do you have people around you with to-do lists and tasks? Oh, yes. Yes, okay. piles, piles of paper. I have notebooks. And I think like, I'll pick out this one notebook will be my notebook that I write things down in when I don't have my phone or whatever. And now I have three and I carry them around everywhere in my work bag. And I have a little notebook by my bed that I will write in if I wake up in the middle of the night and I don't want to turn on my screen. So then it's like, okay, but they're everywhere. How do I get them into a central location where I know where to go to access this stuff? Right. Okay. How about sticky notes? Like you're going to paint a real picture. Like I need to know if you had, if I can wave a magic wand and I said, like a client didn't show, they canceled last minute. So now you have an hour in your schedule. Where do you go to determine what you're going to do at that time? Oh, Amber, what a great question. Yeah. So I sit down at my laptop and I'll think, okay, yeah, I'm going to get some stuff done. Like this is a perfect opportunity to catch up on, oh, there's a notification. Oh, oh, it's somebody. Oh, oh, I'll get, I need to get back to that person. Oh, but I do have to return that phone call. And oh, there's somebody emailing me. And oh, I'll work on that blog. Where was it again? Like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I do. I have sticky notes everywhere and bills, piles of like paper. I hate paper and I want to get rid of it. But you know, it's, I mean, I guess you can't get rid of all the paper. So I find myself going through stacks of stuff that are disorganized and by the time I know it, like that hour's done. I haven't gotten anything done. Right. Okay. Talk to me about a time where you didn't feel like this was an issue. Was there ever a time where you had like one notebook or one app? Or has it been a puzzle piece of systems for so long you don't remember? It's been a long time because I know when I hear about a new app or something, like I will dive right in. I have shiny object syndrome of a terrible case of that. So my husband started using OmniFocus and he was just convinced (laughs) that like, this is the best productivity system ever. You got to use it. He shared the book with me on it. The, I forget what it's called, but so I downloaded it right away and I just felt I was so overwhelmed. Okay. And I started moving stuff into that, like from my other list, but it was just too much. I I couldn't figure out where to start and how to really optimize my use of it. So I just gave up. Right. So it was kind of like all or nothing. And it's just a mess. And I don't know where to start. Okay. Okay. So we don't know each other very well at this moment. So I need to get some insights into your personality. Would you say you are a very details person? Yes. Detail. (laughs) I am. And I can be a perfectionist. And I can overthink things for sure. I start a lot of things and occasionally finish them. (laughs) Alrighty. No, this is great intel. So what, how is this disorganization of tasks affecting your business or your life? Well, I know that my website could be better. Like I really, I've wanted to increase my, you know, SEO optimization for a while. And I know that blogging is something that I love to do it, but it ends up at the bottom of the list because all the other things and I'm a mom. So there's that Mm -hmm. constant interruptions of stuff that I need to do for my family. And so, yeah, it's just feeling scattered all the time and wanting to just, I've tried batching. That's another 
time blocking or whatever you want to call it. But I've not been successful at that either because I feel like it's the same problem. How do I batch these similar tasks when I don't even know where all the tasks are and how to even get started? Right. Did I answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. So currently, what does this feel like? Does it feel like... I don't want to put my words on it. But when you sit down at your desk and there's work to be done... So it's not client work. It's business work. What does that feel for you currently? Uh, Definitely uh, makes me... I feel overwhelmed Mm. because of the number of you know to-dos and I overthink about like okay how do I get started and I remember listening to your episode on putting a power hour on your calendar and I did that but have I ever done it I don't know maybe twice I did that almost like four or five (laughs) months ago yeah so when we're done here I anticipate you being able to do a power hour because you're gonna have the tasks already identified for a power hour to really maximize that. You know, one of the key, I guess, it's like one piece of the puzzle, right? A power hour by itself without the task list to tell you what to do in the power hour is not going to work. So I think that we just need to get these puzzle pieces working for you so that you have your own personal productivity system. Okay. So right now you're feeling overwhelmed and scattered. The results are you're not getting really important projects done, probably because they don't have deadlines and they're multi-stepped and they're outside of the things that are absolutely needed to run your business successfully right now, which is honestly where a lot of business owners are. It's always those things that we know that we could do or should do, but they don't have deadlines that fall by the side. And I think that once we get you squared away with figuring out what your process is of having all your tasks in one place, it's not just going to be a task management, but project management. I think Mm -hmm. you're going to be well on your way to being able to take advantage of these blocks of time. Because the reason that people don't take advantage of free blocks of time is generally because of a lack of focus. Right. Okay. And so we feel like we should be doing something else. And so anything that's got our attention seems like the right thing. Is that sound right? Yes. Totally. Light bulb moment here. The should do's Mm -hmm. are, I think, oh, I should be focusing on you know, when you run your own business, like you should be looking at your money. It should be like whatever you're doing should be bringing in income. And with my business, it's hard because I need to be promoting myself. And that leads back to wanting my website optimized and wanting networking dates on the calendar and calls to referral sources and things like that. Yeah. But it's so much. And if I'm... Especially if I'm working from home or something, like forget about it. Oh, that laundry needs to be done. Or... Oh, I do. I forgot we're out of coffee. I need to run to the store. And it's all those little tasks that just add up to huge time suckers. It does. Okay, so I'm going to paint a little picture for you right now to try and describe what I'm thinking. In our businesses, we have our high value activities, which I've talked about in many episodes, but just to reiterate for you, not sure if you've gotten there. So your high value activities fall in my belief is one of four buckets as a business owner. So the first one's marketing and visibility, which is exactly what you're talking about, right? It's the SEO and the website and the networking and letting people know that you're in business and can help them. And then the second bucket is sales. And for you, that might look like, you know, having a conversation. Are you the right therapist for them? What is your specialty? And I don't know, do people interview therapists? Yeah, like I have people, they can schedule a free consultation online and those take about 15 minutes or so. And yeah, and those could pop up anytime. Yes. Okay. So, but that's a great use of your time, right? Like only you can do that. And that's closest to the dollar. And then your third bucket, which is probably the bucket that you live the most in, which is servicing your client, right? It's the actual delivery of your services. The fourth bucket is leadership. And so as you're growing your team right now, I believe it's just you. Is that Mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. So as you grow your team, maybe you have someone helping you with SEO or marketing or graphic designs or whatever that looks like. And so now you have to live in the fourth bucket to make sure that you're leading your team to help you in one of the other three buckets. Right. But the place that most businesses ultimately live is the other bucket, right? The busy bucket. Yes. And... There is a very real need to be in the other bucket. 
emails have to return, clients have to be called, you know, you have to submit your papers to get paid, you have to call a client that the payment failed, or a client reschedules and you have to get them back on the phone. Like those are like real things. They don't necessarily fall into the first four buckets. Now, In any business, if you're maximizing your clients, generally, there's very little time of project time, right? Of doing the blog or the other things. And so here's what I want you to think of. If those are your four buckets of high value activities, I want to work so efficiently and effectively in the other bucket that it's not overflowing and like drowning out the other four buckets. Okay. If there's yeah. a visual there. So what I mean is, is we always set presidents to the busy bucket, to the other bucket, to all those things that at the end of the day and the end of the week and the end of the month, we're like, there's just no time left over. Now, because I live in the real world and you live in the real world and we both have businesses, it's not as easy as saying, well, just ignore the other bucket, do these buckets first. And, you know, just See how that works out. No, that would be like creating fires all around us. I'm (laughs) sorry, I'm writing a blog. I'm not going to return that client call or I'm not going to do the thing. So now that we're all in real life, our only last option is, is to work as effectively and efficiently in the other bucket so that we can keep sacred working in our other four buckets. Oh, okay. Part of that today is creating your own system and process for collecting all the things that need to get done, having them in a very organized way so that when you do have these pockets of time, a client reschedules or cancels or you find yourself with two back-to-back hours of nothing to do, that you can look at a task list and really know that you are confidently choosing the best thing that needs your time, energy, and focus. I love it. Yeah. So you can just dive right into doing the thing instead of looking for the thing to do or thinking about it. Yes. Yes. And Casey, I have to tell you that, well, it seems like you're utilizing technology and you're not afraid of it and you have all these apps and all that kind of stuff. What I know to be true through experience is that when we don't have a system that we trust, meaning we use it consistently, that everything is there, we ultimately fall back to one of two places. Our head, right? So whatever Mm -hmm. comes to mind, whatever we're thinking about, would you say that's true? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Or the next is the squeaky wheel, which means if someone popped into your inbox when you were trying to figure out what to do, they just hit the jackpot because you're responding to them right away because they just got your attention. (laughs) And that's a lot more fun than figuring out this Productivity challenge, right? Yes, yes. And or, you know, the phone rings or a phone call has to be returned or anything else, like the laundry even being done. Like all of those things seem like, okay, just keep moving. It's like the the train. Mm -hmm. Just keep moving, just keep moving. But it's not gonna get you anywhere. It's kind of like a train track that's just going in a circle. Okay. Oh, yes. All right. So we don't want that. And it feels like we're getting somewhere. And then you look up, you're like, damn it, I'm in the same place. And then you go another day and you're like, dang it. Okay. So I clearly understand where you're at. I needed to say those things once. So our listeners are like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Like that feels like my day too. But two, we haven't really known each other very long outside of the 10 minutes we've been here. So I needed to be clear. I need to make sure that this was the issue. Right. Okay. So let's go into solution mode. If you could wave a magic wand, what would your task list process look like to you? Like anything. And it doesn't have to be right or wrong. But ideally, what would you see for yourself? Hmm. Ideally, I guess I would have a roadmap almost. Like when you use the train analogy, that's what I feel like just going in circles and never knowing what I accomplished that day. So like having a clear, like a map almost that would be... And I know real life doesn't work linearly, like step one, step two, and then you're done. But something like that for tasks that I would know, oh, I need to get this done. I need to get these three things accomplished in order to move on to that next big thing. Okay. Does All that right. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to ask you some other questions about some of your productivity habits. Do you plan your day each day? 
I've tried to do that since I heard the wise Amber de la Garza tell me I should. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I do. And I've gotten better about that. Like on Sunday, I've gotten better at looking at my week ahead, but planning down to the day, I'm still not quite there. And why would you say it? you find it challenging? Does that root back to a task list that's everywhere? It does. And just a lack of energy. Like by the time the evening rolls around and I finally have some time to think about the next day, I don't want to. I just want to sit and veg out and watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I'm going to take... It's probably my problem. No, no, no. I'm going to take a little detour because I think we can fix that one quite easily. And then we'll circle back to the task list. Well... I think you may remember in that episode where I shared the five daily planning pavers, I shared it as if you were planning today for tomorrow, but I was adamant that I said that if today doesn't work, tomorrow morning can work just as well. And so for me, today works because I'm much more optimistic about tomorrow land. It's going to happen tomorrow because it didn't happen today. And so I really like planning my day today for tomorrow and then tomorrow my whole job is just not talking myself out of the plan that I created the day before and just work the plan, right? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. it takes the emotion out of it. Now for you, if you're saying you're already energy depleted and you know just not in the mindset to create a solid productive plan, then I would just advise trying in the morning. That's one option. Or two, you might be trying it too late. I would presume that you should probably try it. Say your last patient was at 4 o'clock then your day doesn't end till 4.30 and you're doing it before you ever leave the office. Ah, okay. Or if your day is different each day, right? Some days you leave earlier than others, then your trigger is not time. Your trigger is your last patient. Your last patient, you finish up your notes and then you go right into a 15-minute daily wrap and then close out your day. And just see if that feels right. And if it doesn't, and you're like, you know what, when I'm done, I'm done. Like I need time to decompress and, you know, just veg out. Then you need to plan the time in the morning prior to your first client. Okay. Okay. I could probably do the morning. I think the morning might be better. Okay, good. I can kind of do that. Like when I get up, I get up earlier. Like I get up like 45 minutes before my son gets up in the morning and I try to do things for like packing lunches and all that stuff. I try to do that the night before. So I could use that time to plan my day. Okay. Instead excellent. of just listening to NPR <laughs> or whatever I'm doing. I don't even know. See, I, I need yeah. to. I don't even know what I'm doing with my time. So you're just going to carve out some very purposeful time of planning your day. And I think for you, it's a combination of figuring out what time of the day works best for you. But also part of the daily review is reviewing a task list. And that can't get done in 10 or 15 minutes if your tasks are everywhere. And so let's tackle that and see if we can create a plan for you to move forward and creating a solid task management system that is all in one place. How does that sound? Oh my God, that sounds perfect. Okay, okay. So if you had to pick your favorite task management app at the moment, what would you say it is? Since you've sampled them all. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I like, I guess maybe Trello. I know it's not really, is it a task management? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I use it for all kinds of things. I have recipes in there and work stuff and on different boards yeah. though, right? Like yeah, each yeah, board yeah. has a different theme. Okay, so do I. And I like the look of Trello for some reason. I feel like it's more organized and the way the boards are in columns. Yeah. My brain doesn't hate that. So maybe I should go with that. Yeah. Plus it I, syncs very well. I find that it syncs very well with all my devices. Okay, great. Perfect. Well, I use Trello as well. I use a hybrid between Trello and Outlook. Trello is everything on a bigger scale, like projects, anything that has multi steps to it, and especially anything to do with my team or anybody on my team. I have always used Outlook. So I actually pull in specific things that need my attention into Outlook. Since you're not currently using Outlook, I would in fact just use Trello. 
And then when you're ready to level it up, and we're going to go into how to use Trello. So we'll go down that in just a second. We're going to okay. figure that out. But just like version 2.0 of this would be how you use Trello, but pull out specific tasks and block it on your schedule. Okay. Okay. But first we're going to get to like, how do you get all the things from all the places? How do you create the habit of getting into Trello every day to look at? And that Trello is now your new boss. Okay. Awesome. And, and whether you named it Trello or OmniFocus or any other task management app, we need to consider our task management system, our boss, which means once we tell it what to do and kind of program it, meaning input all the tasks, then we need to reference that on a daily basis to determine what is it that needs my time, energy, and focus. I love that thinking about it as your boss. Because that's another... I find myself forgetting to even look at the yes. thing that I'm using. That was what happened with OmniFocus. I was like, I forget that it's on my phone. Right. I'm never really going to look at it. So if right. I'm thinking, thinking about it as my boss, I answer to that. So I, right. I need and to so consult we need with my boss every day. You do. And ultimately, if everything is in there, you really shouldn't know what to do. Like if you were to sit at your desk to start your day, if you were using the system correctly, you shouldn't know what to do, right? Like there's no inputs to say, unless you're just chasing after fires or living in your inbox. And so those are really real habits that need to be worked on or broken. But we want to replace that with, when are you checking Trello? Right. When are you okay. reviewing Trello? And as a business owner, I don't know about you, but tasks are coming in all day, every day, right? Yeah. Today doesn't look like tomorrow and the next day. So we have to be in our task management system, if not to just input things, but always to get what we need to be doing out of it. Okay. I love Trello too. It's a very visual app. It allows you to prioritize and it allows you to create really anything you want because of the levels that it has. So you go from boards, which should be entire themes, to lists that can run from left to right and create workflows. And then you have your cards and your cards can have checklists. So this is a really robust system and you don't need to use all of that. But if you were to use all of that, Trello can ultimately, I believe, do just about any solopreneur or small business owner needs as a task management system for themselves and their team. So I want to be completely straight with you here. It's not obviously new information to tell you to pick one app and go with it. Here's where the work is going to happen. And it's going to be to identify where new habits need to be made. Or maybe habits that aren't serving you well need to be broken. Okay. And those are things of when you're in a rush or you think of something and your go-to isn't to put it into Trello. Mm -hmm. And if it's not natural for you and you find a lot of resistance with ultimately having an idea and getting it into Trello, if there's any kind of resistance to that, then maybe it needs to be a two-step process where you keep your one notebook and you're writing tasks as they come in throughout the day if it's not something that got done that day, now it goes on your task list to be prioritized in order. Ah, okay. And I use a combination of that for sure. I always have a notebook with me. There are so many things that come up throughout our day that it takes more time to put them in the digital task management system than to just do them. Yeah, yeah. So I like that one to kind of a process. And then ideas and tasks that are not a today thing need to be put into the task management system. And then you utilize that to create your daily review and your weekly reviews. Oh, okay. I like it. Okay. All right. So what kind of... Do you have like active lists going? Or would you say that any kind of lists that are in multiple programs right now are kind of dormant? Like, are you actively using any of them? I am. Um, I have reminders going off all the time. (laughs) Okay. So let's talk about how you're using each of the programs and just see how Trello may be able to solve that. Okay. Because you're going to have to ultimately set yourself up in Trello to address all of these things. So reminders, reoccurring events, projects, like anything like that. So talk to me about... We'll name program number one that you're using right now. So what's giving you all the notifications? Okay. My iPhone reminders. I find it handy to be able to tell Siri to you know, remind me to do 
X, Y, or Z when I get home or when I leave my son's school. So, a you know, an example might be pick up bread, you know, when I leave my son's school or whatever. Like that's like a personal kind of thing that it would do. Yeah. And my reminders has a business list and then personal. And the default is for business. So if I just tell Siri to add something, she's going to put it on my work thing, which, which is not useful because all the tasks are mixed up with personal and business. So, but yeah, so we're oh, there. Okay. But they should be separate. I have them. I have two separate lists, but you know, if I'm using Siri to make the reminder, she's going to default to the work list, but I think okay. I can probably specify it for her. Okay, absolutely. So I do know that Trello does not have that ability. So now we need to figure out if that's working for you. How do you access that list when you're at your desktop? Oh, yeah. From Siri. Do you? I do. I will pull it up. It syncs with my computer. So if I'm sitting Mm -hmm. down with my laptop, I can pull it up. And I have it like in my dock. So it has a little badge for like overdue tasks. So if I have a free time or whatever, like I will sit down, but I don't have, it's not like a consistently scheduled thing to look at my reminder list. And it should be from what you're saying. Right, right. And would you say that you use that more for personal or more for work? I think it might be equal. Okay. All right. Tell me what else do you use? I also have notes, Apple, you know, iPhone and laptop, Mac, whatever, notes program. And, and are those mess. used for notes? It is a mess. It is, yes, it is like keeping track of my son's height. Like he likes to measure how tall he is. <laughs> so I yeah. keep a log in there, but the reminder is in the reminders, like going off every month to check Cooper's height. So that's two separate things right there that are creating that. Okay. So, but do you use notes for actual action items or just to write stuff, notate stuff? Mainly for just keeping track of ideas. Ideas. Okay. And when you have time, like if I said, go write a blog, do you have one place that you're looking? Is it the notes? I have a Trello board of blog ideas and I have a note for blog ideas. And I never know which one is where, you know? Like if you said, yeah. right now we're going to use this hour to write a blog, I'd be like, oh, where was that note? And I would waste like 10 minutes like going through my notes and going through Trello. I'd probably first check the Trello board though. Okay. But it's probably... Who knows what's really there? Okay. All right. What else do you have? So we have Apple Notes. We have iPhone Reminders. We have Trello for blog and notes for blogging. What else do you have? I have my iCal calendar, which I don't even think they call it iCal anymore. I think it's just called Mm -hmm. calendar on my phone and my laptop and those sync. And then I have a work calendar that is through my practice management software. But it does... If I add something there, it will add it to my iCal. So... Okay. And do you use your calendar for tasks or is it just appointments? It depends. Just today, I had something on my calendar that really should have been a reminder, I think. Okay. That to pick up something from the store. And it was on my calendar. And I'm like, why did I do that? (laughs) You wanted to make sure you didn't miss it for sure. (laughs) Yeah. I was kind of like, I was scheduling it thinking like, okay, I want to make sure that I don't miss it. Yeah. Okay. How about OmniFocus? Okay, good. And how about OmniFocus? Are you currently using it? I gave up on that. Okay. And what else do you have? I have... I think that's it. And email inbox. I have a folder yep. in my inbox for follow up. So I have a little folder that if it's stuff that I need to do, like if I need to respond to somebody that I don't have the information yet for them, say I get a call from a client that is not that needs something that I'm not specialized in. So I'm looking for yeah. referrals and maybe I've reached out to some referrals to see if they're taking new patients, but I don't have that reply yet to send the client. So I might have that in my four follow-up folder. And I have tons of folders in my email box too. Okay. Which aren't tasks. Mostly it's important stuff I just want to save. But my four follow-up okay. folder tends to be task-oriented. Absolutely. And so you need to look at that on a regular basis. Yes. How often do you think you look at it right now? Maybe every other day in a good okay. week. <laughs> and does it have to be that frequently? Probably not. 
it could probably be a once a week thing. Okay. Just to circle back, this waiting for a follow-up folder is an excellent task to do in your power hour. Ah, oh, okay. That, that is one of my favorite things to do is just to review the waiting for a follow-up. You gave them a week. And honestly, like worst case, it's a week, right? Because right. if you send an email on Wednesday, it's now Friday. That's two days. You send an email on Tuesday, it's three days. So I have found that the waiting for a follow-up folder... Generally, unless it's something that's more urgent that probably should get pulled out as a task or a reminder, if you just think, do I, is there any, you know, negative to waiting till Friday, you know, to ding them again? And the answer is almost always no. Right. This is a great task to put in the power hour time. Okay, cool. Okay, so talk to me about notebooks. So you have a notebook by your bed, mm-hmm. you have a notebook at your office or in your purse. Yes. They've multiplied to at least three notebooks. <laughs> yes. Right? Which is not that bad, by the way. I've got to tell you, that is not that bad. I was expecting far more. And do you use sticky notes? Yeah. Some of the some of the pages of the notebook have sticky notes on them. Okay. That's okay, how great. terrible it is. <laughs> so would you be willing to lock up, get, get rid of, or give your son your sticky notes? <gasps> All of my sticky notes. as long as you have them at arm's length you will use them i'm looking at them right now yeah yeah i mean if they are there and they're pretty and colorful and they're calling your name they're going to be used for what they're used for which is a quick grab it write a note grab it write a note and then now it's literally tempting you outside of maintaining a system yes you're totally right i can part ways with the sticky notes Okay. You know, I could just say, hey, stop using sticky notes. But I guarantee (laughs) if you do not get them out of your sight, out of arms, like even if you have to put them in a drawer across, you know, the room in your office. Okay. Because here's the thing is when you're sitting at your desk and they're right there to be pulled, they're going to be used. And you're telling me you don't want to use them. You want everything in one place. So if you don't want to use them, you need to break up with them. Okay. 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 All right. Second, you have three notebooks because you bought three notebooks and you have access to three notebooks. So how many notebooks are you comfortable with? Oh, I would love to just have one. Well, the one okay. by my bed is little and I think it needs to stay there because I frequently will be like trying to go to sleep at night and think of a million things and I don't want the screen. The time and I have this little pen that has a light on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I so tell me more about that. What type of stuff gets put in your notebook? I will think of blog ideas, copy I need to add to my website. Like I'm offering a group in March and I will think of, oh, I need to put another bullet point about registering, you know, the time frame to register for my group. I need to add that tomorrow, you know, and so I'll write that down because it's occurring to me, you know, when your brain slows down at night, all that stuff is racing through it. And I just want to get it out of my head. And the little notebook is kind of the perfect way to do that. Okay. I love it. So I think we just figured something out that would work for you. It sounds like you download during the night, right? Like your ideas are coming to you. And so I want you to think about your daily review in the morning that you're going to try, which sounds like you were doing it at home before your son wakes up, Mm -hmm. which is in closely to this notebook. Right. You have to upload. So if you download into the notebook part of your daily review is going to be to upload those into your task management system oh, and transfer yes. them. So this is going to give you so much more freedom to just dump, dump, dump. And then the next morning when you're reviewing your day and or week or whatever, you're already in your task management system, whatever place we land on. And your job is to get these notes and items and tasks into your system. Oh. So now when you go start your day at your office, it's all in one place. When you come home and you go to bed the next night, it should be a clean sheet of paper and you download again and you upload in the morning. Oh, I love it. How is that? Because right now... You're brilliant. (laughs) Well, it's just about processes and having it all in the right place. Because while it sounds like a great idea to download and get that out of your head and put it in a notebook, my guess is that notebook's pretty thick and has a lot of great ideas and tasks in it. And then you're left to still remember it when you get to the office. Right. It's not truly being used the way it's used, which is it's downloaded, it's out of my mind. And then I get into my task management. It's like you go in, it's 11 o'clock and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember I wrote this thing on that task list at home. 
Now what do I do with it? And so I want you to think of this as just a part of the process. So download at night, just stream of thinking. There's no right way. There's no purpose just as it comes to you. And then you're going to process and upload anything that comes. In my morning time. And your morning part time. Of planning my day will be to upload. To upload. Upload the brain dump. Yeah. And not all of it is going to d- get done that day, but you're already in a task management system and you can set future dates to it and put it where it belongs once we land on what that task management system is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This thing, this is starting to like feel doable. <laughs> okay, cool. And so the, the notebook by the side of your desk is going to stay there and it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go in your purse. It doesn't go anywhere. And the only place you can take it is wherever you're sitting down to do your daily review, whether that be at the kitchen or a home office or whatever that looks like. Okay. Yes. Because I've put it in my work bag before thinking that, oh, I'll <laughs> upload when I get to work and it never happens. And I'm like, where's my little notebook? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then you're going to have to break up with at least, I think, two other notebooks if you have three in the office. As long as you do have your hands and accessibility to reaching for multiple notebooks, you'll always have them. Yeah. And so I want you to, if you're ready, to commit to one notebook. Because now we're going to use that notebook for the same thing. Maybe it's the buffer before things get into your task list if they can be one and done. Maybe it's random remembering something and you have a place to jot it down, right? Because the act of organizing it into a task list and reprioritizing, that takes work and it takes time and we don't want that. So if you can do that in a notebook, then you're going to do that. What we're going to add to that thing that's already working for you is how do you process the things in the notebook to get it into your overall task management system. Oh, okay. And that you're not working from your notebook, right? right? Unless it's a quick, I need to return a call or when I'm done with this, like don't forget to do X, Y, and Z, like little things. You're not going to find big tasks in there because that means that you have now decided to abandon your plan for the day, right? right? Because that list didn't exist when you planned your day. And when you planned your day, it was with a bigger thought in mind than just putting out fires and responding to anything that shows up in that little notebook. Yeah. I love calling it what it is, like naming Trello or I think it's going to be Trello my task management system, like calling it that instead of just, oh, that might be a Trello thing or that might be a remind... You know, like I like that because then it just trains my brain to think of it as that's my boss. Yes, yes. Now, I'm going to be honest. The only thing that I don't have a solution for at the moment, and I would have to give this some more thought, is the fact that Trello doesn't have reminders like your phone does. And the fact that you can say, remind me you know, to pick up milk and it's triggered by your location, right? Like that's like amazing technology. It's really handy. (laughs) Yeah, it is. My guess is, is that it would, because of the way that you're using it, it would probably be best to continue to be used for your personal stuff. Okay. Like, I mean, I have reminder on my phone for Friday night that says throw out the oil. Like from cooking because the trash man comes the next day and I don't want it in the yeah. garbage all week. Like, like I have random stuff like that too, right? That I need to be reminded at the time I need to actually do something yes. with it. I feel that those should be personal because any other reminders like where you want to be interrupted from your daily flow, that's what reminders are. Yeah. Because if not, you would just pick your son up, get in the car and drive home like you're in your daily flow. Notifications, that's what they're meant to do is disrupt that. When you're at work, I would rather see if you have to be disrupted, it's something that came from your calendar. Oh, okay. And the notification is coming from your calendar if it's work-related. Yeah. Because now you're in your environment where you can do something with it. Yeah. And you're determining in context to what you're doing and where you need to do. Like if your phone is on silent, do not disturb because you have a client in your office and it gives you a reminder, like that's no good. However, you would never set a reminder or notification on your calendar for when you can clearly see you have a client appointment. So I think that business needs to stay on your calendar for notifications and then personal. And now you won't have that issue if you default it to personal is that that is reminding you of all those types of things. Now. I don't know the details of how you've been using it, but does that feel right for you? Yes, that makes so much sense because I think when I blur those lines between work and home, home will just take priority 
you know, and, and I just allow home to, and I have time at home on the weekends and like, you know, in the evenings and I can get that stuff done. Like there's rarely something that needs to be done at home that I can't do when I get home or, you know, or when I'm on like mom duty and not at work. So you're totally right. Cause I'm thinking about the things that go off, the reminders that do go off that are set for when I get to work. And they're like stuff that doesn't belong there. It belongs in my task management system. Okay, good. Just like create so, my flyer for my group. Like that shouldn't be a reminder that's constantly going off every time I get to work. Yes. So flyer for your group, is that a business task or a personal business. task? Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. So I think your your reminders and how you're you're navigating your day is going to be dictated by your daily review of your task management system of Trello. Once you've identified a priority order, what's going to get done, you're going to time block the most important things in any open space you have. And that would be... Obviously, you got to carve that out between client appointments, right? right? So you're very clear that if you start today, maybe there's two hours in the day that they're not client appointments. If not, you have clients. And so you are going to be very purposeful. Okay. Hour number one is like administrator or whatever. Or hour number two is administrative. Hour number one is writing a blog. And that's it. You've just planned your only two available hours for the day, right? Yeah. And I'm sure every and every day looks different. And that's why you need to plan your day in real time the morning up for you. That works best for you. Okay. And you had said something and I want to make sure I heard that correctly. You have reminders going off during your work day that are personal that are distracting you. Is that correct? Sometimes occasionally. I would have to look. You know, I would have to I need to do I might have to sit down and like <laughs> clean all this stuff up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I would just encourage you to identify what your boundaries are, whatever those be, and then stick to them. So personal is personal, work is work. Now, with that being said, do I schedule my doctor's appointments in the middle of my business day? Yes. But if you looked at my calendar, I literally blocked off 30 minutes to make personal phone calls. Ooh. And it was to you know the dentist for my son. It was a veterinary appointment. And it was my OBGYN. But I literally saw that those tasks were on my task list and I carved out 30 minutes of personal time to make those phone calls. Had I not, those things can just start multiplying and consuming. And then now it's not, oh, it makes sense. I need to make those calls during the day when the office is open. Now you're ordering your groceries instead of doing your blog. Yes. But you could do groceries with your kids there, but you definitely can't write a blog with your kids under your feet. Right. And so we really want to create those boundaries to be able to maximize our time during our work time and then personal stuff during our personal time. Absolutely. Yeah. Like the doctor's appointments things. Yes. Yeah. I, that reminder or, to, to schedule my son's like seven year well check yes. has been going off. And I keep saying, remind me tomorrow, remind me tomorrow because I'm at work or I'm or whatever. Like I'm just not in the place to be able to do that. That shouldn't be happening. Right. It's just an interruption. That's right. Your reminders are not working for you. What they need to be is part of a to-do list. You look at the to-do list, whatever that we decide that to be. And then you look at your calendar and you're like, Thursday, Thursday, I have extra white time. I only have four clients. So Thursday, you're scheduling time to make the appointment for your son. Because... Only then do you need to be reminded. If you're reminded on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, those are just distractions that are stopping you from doing what you really need yes. to do. Yes. So we need to get your notifications and reminders showing up at the time that you can actually do something. Yes. Like. Okay, cool. The way to do that is going to reside in the weekly review, the daily review. And for your daily and week review to work well for you, you have got to work from one solid task management system. Yes. Whenever we don't have one solid task management system, like I said, you're more apt to put out fires and you're going to try and remember yourself what needs to get done. But there's one more thing. And this is really important. It is almost absolutely impossible to prioritize your tasks when you don't have them all in one place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm living because that. Yeah, well, you and a lot of other people, but we try to prioritize, but you can't, you're not really seeing everything in context and you're not seeing due dates and you're not seeing everything that needs your attention. And only then can you truly say, this one is most important and then this one and then this one. And while that can change from day to day, you have to have a snapshot of what that looks like to truly decide what gets your time and attention. All right. 
So we have covered a lot. So let's close this out with what would Trello look like for you to set it up as your new task management system? Okay. okay. I want to think of all the ways that you can use it. You mentioned blogging ideas. Yep. Check. Meal planning recipes. Check. Yes. Daily task lists. I think Trello can absolutely do that. It's on board. Projects like long-term ideas. So I have a project board that holds all of the ideas for projects. Mm -hmm. And then when I get ready to work on a project, say it's a website update, or we're right in the middle of creating a whole new opt-in, then that project, because it's so many steps to it, gets its own board. Ah, okay. Yeah. And now you can't have a whole bunch of boards of projects because now you're, again, not being focused. So you should only have one or two projects going because now you have a lot of moving parts. And when you see project time on your calendar, you go to the project board of whatever website, whatever that looks like for you. Okay. So with regards to Trello, I can't go into like all the details in this coaching session of like how to use it. But if now that you've made a decision and you have clarity on moving forward about Trello, what kind of time frame can you commit to of having all of the tasks, ideas, projects taken from all the places and put into Trello? Mm. Well, I do have some free time coming up because my husband's going out of town. And so the time that I would be hanging out with him in the evening after I get my son to bed, like now I think I can maybe use some of that time to work on this because I'm excited about it right now because you just like yeah. you totally changed my life, Amber. So I'm yeah, you know, oh, I'm, just... I'm gonna be motivated to do it. It's not like, oh, I don't know where to start, but now you've given me some direction. So I really think I could spend like maybe an hour, start like Wednesday through Saturday. I bet I could spend an yeah. hour each night doing that and then reward myself with some Netflix after I work on my Trello. How's that sound? Okay. That sounds great. And so I love that you are gradually going to do it. You, you know when you're going to do it. So the goal here is you're going to pick one thing. So maybe it's one notebook. Okay. And you're going to go through the whole notebook and just you're dumping it into the tasks. Now, I don't want you to try and create organization of it, prioritizing of it, nothing. Like The first thing you're doing is like taking all the buckets and dumping them into Trello. Okay. Okay. I can do that. And then you're done and you're getting rid of the notebook. And then you're going to go to OmniFocus and you're like, oh my gosh, did I have any great ideas that were only in here? You're going to go through, you're going to pull that out. And then when you're done, you're done with OmniFocus. And then you're going to do the same thing for your business reminders in your iPhone. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to pull those out and they all go into Trello. And this is like one board, one board, okay. one, board one list, so many cards. Then it's like, oh my gosh, here's the best way I can describe this. When I used to clean my bedroom as a kid, I would, for fun, if that tells you how weird I am, <laughs> take everything out of my closet and my drawers, everything. And I would put everything on my bed and it would be like so tall, like three or four feet, or maybe not. I was a kid, it felt that big. So I put everything on my bed and then I would pull out one thing and I would put it in its new home or its right place. And so I want you to think about you're literally doing this with all your tasks. You're taking everything out of the cupboards and the Uh junk drawer and the notebooks and the whatever, and you're going to put it inside Trello. And then only then can you see and you're going to see patterns. You're going to be like, oh, this all has to do with this project. Oh, look at that. There's like 10 blog ideas that gets moved to the blogging board, board, Mm -hmm. right? And then you're going to say oh my gosh, Like this is a reoccurring task and you'll set up reoccurring tasks. But until you see it all together, I don't think you're going to be able to see how best to organize yourself. No, I, I, to- I love that. Yeah, yeah. It makes okay. total sense. All right, awesome. So I think that that's the way forward. So just to recap, do you have any questions before I recap the solutions that we kind of came up with today? So when I'm moving everything into Trello and like making that my big bucket, so it should be one board and each one of these like random reminders or whatever should be a card or should I just make a list yeah. like a card with the with it like in the comments I don't even know like no okay. no no, no, that'll no. Be so okay. each, yeah so each one is going to be its own card because ideally they're going to be moved to so either different board where they need to go okay yeah or on the board you're going to have pending like like kind of like waiting 
today's to do's, work in progress, and then completed where they move from left to right. And so you'll move the cards through the process until they fall off the right side of the screen right. and they're in the completed pocket. Okay. View it as checklists. You can't visually see it. Like the reason you love Trello is so you can visually see it. You'll have to open the card, read the thing, check off the box, and you don't get to move it through a workflow. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So every task gets its own thing. So then when you're done and you've kind of organized it and batched it, what I see is an epic power hour. Yeah. Okay. This power hour is going to let you go through and like clean up all these little things, like just start crossing them off the list. Because what I want you to really leave with is a solid to do list that you can prioritize and work through day after day, week after week. But because it's been disorganized for some time and it's been kind of all over the place, and when you do this kind of collection, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I was supposed to email that person or I was supposed to do this or I was supposed to do that, right? right. That's okay. Now you're going to just slam it out in like an epic power hour. Okay. And I'm using the word hour very loosely. (laughs) Epic meant it's probably going to be much longer than an hour just to get you started. And then the maintenance plan is regular power hours. Right. Okay. It makes perfect sense. Thank you. All right. So you're going to have to go burn some ships. Okay. Oh, yeah. So here's some recaps. One is that your notebook beside your desk is amazing. That's you downloading you are changing the time of day that you're doing your daily review. And you're going to go back and listen to the 5 Daily Planning Pavers episode. You're going to do it in the morning. So you're probably having 6 Daily Planning Pavers. Your sixth thing is that you're uploading anything that you downloaded to yourself the day before. You are getting rid of your sticky notes. You are getting rid of all notebooks, but one notebook in your office. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to set yourself up with Trello. And so first, it's a project to get yourself set up. And then you go into maintenance plan. The project is you're committed uh, one hour a day with the reward of Netflix after. Yep. And then once you have the system up and going, the method you're going to utilize to maintain this, right? Because we're not crash dieting here. This is like the new... Right. Lifestyle, life, yeah, life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the new lifestyle. This isn't crash dieting. Is the regular daily reviews, a weekly review, and a power hour is what maintains this system. Yeah. Okay. All good. I'm ready. I'm gonna do it. I can totally hear. We're gonna have to have like a come back on the show and tell <laughs> us how it is episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You gotta hold me accountable here. Yeah, yeah. So just to pull back the curtains for you and our listeners here today, you know, when we are in this, it feels so overwhelming and often we don't know where to start. And we don't know that if it's a false start, if it's the right place to start. And for Casey, what I did is just help her guide her through her creating a process that worked for her and that may work for her. Now, and also with that being said, this is version 1.0 of Casey's process. I anticipate versions 2.0, 3.0. And for this to work for her for the long term, to get her the results of not being overwhelmed, focused on what she wants to work on, getting the most out of her time when she has white space or unexpected time on her calendar, is that she has to be dedicated in tweaking this to make it work for her over time. Okay? So right now, we chose Trello. And she's going to stick that out. And she's going to give it a good shot. And maybe she gets some Trello training. And maybe she gets creative with how she sets it up. But I can guarantee the way she sets it up the first time is not going to be what it looks like six months from now. And I just want to say that's okay. Okay? This isn't a perfect solution out of a box. It's a place to start to find the way that works best for you. Okay. And that advice was to Casey. I'm looking right at her, but that's for anyone that's listening that has tried something and it didn't last, or you gave it a little bit of a shot and you're like, it's not for me. I can tell you that if it's based on principle, which you guys heard a lot of principle here, which is like, it was a non-negotiable. She has a daily review. It was a non-negotiable that she has one place. I didn't tell her where it had to be. Those are the principles that work. It is your job to figure out how you make those principles work with you and your system and your life and your personality. All right. It was my pleasure having you on here, Casey. Thank Thank you so much. And I can't wait to hear more about how this unfolds for you in the weeks and months to come. Thank you so much. I have loved having you listen to this episode of Productivity Straight Talk. But I need to be straight with you. 
No change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you or your business. So based on what you learned today, based on listening in on my strategy session with Casey, what were you inspired to take action on? I want you to be so clear with what were your ahas and actionables. How could you integrate some of the advice and recommendations that I gave Casey? I want you to take a few moments and give that some real thought before you go on with the rest of your day. I would love to hear what your insights are inside our private Facebook community. If you're not already a Productivity Straight Talk Insider, you can join us by going to productivitycommunity.com. Again, you can join us for free by going to productivitycommunity.com. And if you are interested in a strategy session with me, you can go check that out over at theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash strategy session. Now, as a reminder, your strategy session absolutely does not need to be on air. In fact, most of my strategy sessions are not on air. You will have the option to either do a private strategy session, or if you choose to help others through your strategy session, we can definitely record that and go on air. I have a special thank you going out to Eric Fisher, who recently said, not everyone learns the same way, and there's no one right size fits all approach to productivity. This show is a welcome addition to the existing realm of productivity podcasts. Thank you so much, Eric Fisher, for that honest review on iTunes. So that's my straight talk for you today. And until next time, have a productive week. 